you have a prepaid call from an inmate at the Salinas Valley State Prison, Soledad, California. This call and your mm-hmm. telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for using. Hello. Hey, how you doing, bro? Hey, what's up, Drew? What's the deal? How's it going? I'm right here chilling. Well, my name is Milton, and um, I'm single right now. And, of course, you know, I'm looking for a, a pen pal, somebody I can communicate with. I'm soon to be uh, released, and I am looking for some, you know, support services. So if anybody's willing to correspond with me via JPay or through letter, you know, just reach out, and I'll reach right back out. Okay, what's your nationality? My nationality is Latino, Hispanic. I'm Hispanic. Were you ever part of any gangs, groups, or organizations? Yes. I was, I was. I was part of a, a notorious gang out there on the west side of L.A. called Lennox 13. And um, for a long time, I was participating in gang activities, which made me become a Southsider. And then from there, I became a Sureño when I came to prison. And the same thing when I was out there in the streets, I was participating in, you know, Mexican mafia, you know, uh, 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 you know, organizations that was going on out there in the city of like Compton, Linwood, South Central, and all that, you know. So I was participating in uh, in gangs. Okay, so that's where you uh, grew up at. I grew up in Inglewood and Lenox. Oh, okay. That's that's where your um your neighborhood is at, right? Yeah, that's where my neighborhood is at, Lennox 104th Street. So, what they call you, or what you go by? Okay, for so, sure. Well, in the streets where I'm from, my homeboys know me as CK CK Midnight. You know, CK Midnight from Lennox. Okay, can you um tell us how your childhood was and your upbringing, um, and how you were raised? Yeah. Well, Definitely, definitely. Well, I come from a background of, uh, you know, Hispanics. My, my mother is a real flirtatious woman from Central America. She came over here when there was uh, a big war out there in Central America with the Somosistas and the Sandinistas, you know, way back in the day. My, uh, my, my, my mother was, you know, part of the, you know, war lifestyle that happened out there in Central America. So she got to the United States. She met my father, which is an Arabic man. He's Arabic and, you know, but he grew up in Mexico. So while I was growing up, you know, I've seen a lot of prostitution, a lot of, uh, a lot of drug dealing, you know, in my house, you could come and pick up, you know, $20 sacks of dough. At that time, it was a lot of crystal going around, crystal, you know, people were selling crystal and, you could come to my house and and uh, find any type of women you want to sleep with and for a real cheap price. And so growing up, that's what I, I, I seen. And uh, therefore, you know, it, to me, it was normal. It was normal. So um, my, my lifestyle growing up was kind of, uh, I could say, dangerous. But at the same time, I thought it was fun. It was fun. It was real fun. It was something different. You know, it wasn't boring. I was always having fun growing up. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Can you tell us what led you or how or why you joined the Lennox uh, Street Gang? Yeah, definitely. Well, in the middle school where I was going to, you know, there was, back in the early 2000s, there was a lot of tag bagging, you know, party crews and all these little tagging crews where people were from, you know, like... BTM or, or KWS, you know, big time mobsters, crazy tunes, crazy rhinos, you know, all these are crews out there that, you know, youngsters were making it. Um, I was part of a crew called BTM. Now, I remember the Lennox boys will see me and they'll be like, hey, homie, you know, you're, you're way too gang related. Like, sooner or later, you're going to have to be from the gang. And I will be like, nah, dog, like, you know, I'm, I'm part of what I'm part of, and that's pretty much it. But one day at a flight party, you know, I, you know, grew enough courage to be like, you know what, man, I'm a, I'm a go for it. So I approached the Lennox boys, and I was like, let's just get this uh, out the way. And as you know, to be part of a Sureño gang, you have to be jumped in. You have to get jumped in. And so I, and the meaning to get jumped in is to for you to know what it feels like, you know, to uh to fight, you know what I mean? How, what it feels like to uh, represent, 
you know, the gang you're going to be a part of, you know, and, and to never back down, that's pretty much what, what getting jumped in really means. And so, yeah, I ended up getting jumped by, uh, by a few other gang members, and uh, from there, my life just really just hit rock bottom after that. Okay, what are you incarcerated for, and how long is your sentence? Right now, I'm incarcerated for shooting my best friend. Um, they gave me a 10-year sentence, and um, I shot my best friend due to the gang politics that uh, that that I was a part of. And how long have you been incarcerated? I've been incarcerated now nine years. I have one year left. Okay, can you go ahead and explain to us why you shot your your friend and and what exactly was the gang politics you're talking about? Okay, well, due to the gang politics I was a part of, you know, there was a lot of uh, backstabbing, conniving, uh, things going on. I was blinded to a lot of things that were going on, you know, behind my back. You know, people were plotting, you know, things behind my back that I wasn't aware of, and um, and I was feeling very uncomfortable about a few situations that was going on out there. So uh, I realized that my best friend, this dude that I grew up with, was being in contact with some rival gang members that uh, that I just didn't condone of, you know? And uh, these rival gang members had put a price on my head. You know, they put a price on my head, meaning they came and, and uh, they wanted to pay these people to, to, to get me smoked, you know, to get me killed out there. And, uh, and so when I found out that this dude was being in contact with these people or whatnot, well, then I acted the way I acted and, you know, um, yeah, I acted the way I acted on that and therefore, you know, I did what I did. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Okay, you mentioned you're um, connected some way, some fashion with the Mexican Mafia. So my question to you is, were you connect him out in the streets or in prison? And also, were you a member, an associate, or a foot soldier? I would say, I would say uh, associate. You know, I was a person that would come to your door, and if you owed, you know, any type of money, if you owed any type of money, I was the one that was going to basically, you know, snatch you up and take you to this place until, you know, you or your folks was to pay the money that you had to pay back then and day, you know? So I would say I was just an associate. And that was out in the streets, correct? Out on the streets, correct. <clears throat> and you mentioned to me before, when we had a brief conversation, <clears throat> you told me that you you were green-lighted? Were, were, did the Mexican Mafia green-light you? And, and if so, why did they yeah, green-light yeah. you? I ended up being green-lighted due to um, a female, you know, there was this female that uh, that I met out there in the city of Paramount, you know, and this female, a real gorgeous female, this female will come out on magazines, you know, the bully magazines with the dogs and the little booty shorts, I'm talking about this female was gorgeous, man, and uh, so I met her and uh, she had ties to another Mexican Mafia member. And, uh, you know, at, that, at this time I was real young. I was young, you know. And so um, I ended up taking her car. I took her car, and I didn't know how much drugs she had in that car. You know, she had a lot of drugs up in that car. So when I took the car, I took everything else that was in the car. And that right there alone got me a green light with the Mexican mafia because I didn't return, you know, what was in there. Okay, so I'm assuming when you went to prison, that green light followed you in prison? Absolutely, it did. Absolutely, it did. I remember back in 2013, um, I ended up, you know, having to get stabbed for that. You know, I got stabbed. I had three dudes just run up on me, you know, with, with shanks, and uh, they ended up stabbing me on, in prison for that. And um, I'm assuming no. it was in a main line, right? Yeah, this was on the main line, yeah. And how long were you there before they um before they stabbed you because oh, man, of that green light? There. I was there for about a, a month. A month a month before uh, everything hit the fan, you know, and 
It was back in 2013, 14. Okay, let me ask you this. I know information travels easily from outside to inside. My question to you is, do you know um, how did they um, transmit that information inside yeah, I knew. so fast? I, to me, it was just a matter of time. You know, I knew it was going to happen. You know, I knew it was coming. But I had pride. You know, I was, like I said, blinded to this. I was deceived into this, you know, I, in my mind it was Lennox 13 or nothing, you know, and to me, um, I knew this was coming, yet alone, I took my chances, you know, and this could have been, I could have got stabbed and died, you know, but I said in my mind, you know, I'm going to wait until this happens and see if maybe I could uh, deal with it, you know, but when... Everything did happen, it happened via... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. It happened via phone. You know, the dudes that were on the yard got connected with the dude that was in the street, and all he had to do was just say, yeah, handle that, and that was it. So since they green-lighted you and removed you from the yard and all that, right? Did they green-light just you, or did they green-light your gang as well? No, they, they just green-lighted me, me, for basically, you know, she she ended up going back with this dude or whatever, but uh, they just ended up green-lighting me for that. Okay, so since they just green-lighted you um, and not your gang, because sometimes they do that, sometimes they green-light the whole gang, right? Yeah, absolutely. They, um, yeah. The, my question to you is, does that mean that you're removed from that gang as well? You know what? These dudes came to my neighborhood park, you know, and they all had a, a talk about that. And, and uh, yeah, that, that automatically, well, it depends. It, like, the people that I grew up with, the people that know who I am, the people that, you know, we've shared experiences together. I'm talking about intense situations together, you know. We shared moments that we will never forget. These are my homeboys that, that, that we literally grew up with each other. They know who I am and what I'm truly about. You know what I mean? So therefore, then those, to me, will always be my friends and I will be their friends. You know, it's the people that do not know me. The youngsters on a beach who's on a skateboard. It's the young bucks that have no idea the stuff that I've been through that are willing to come through with put a bullet in my head with that 38 they got or, or whatever it is. It's the people that don't know who I am that, you know, I should watch out for. Okay, let me ask you this. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. I know there's people that's been removed and been, um, you know, mean stabbed or whatnot, right, as well. <laughs> and then they go to, um, let's say, the <clears throat> S&Y yard or 50-50 yard, right? <clears throat> and, um, they are still, some of these gangs, some of these dudes from these gangs, they're still welcome in their neighborhood, right? So it's up to that neighborhood yeah. at the end of the day, correct? Or, or, or am I incorrect? Because I, you know what I mean? I still see people like came out from the S&Y yard and they're still yeah. accepted oh. by their gang. Look, look, look. S&Y literally is... Not what people think it is. S M Y. It's a zoo. It's a zoo. I have people, cousins, relatives that are on the mainland right now, Kern Valley, you know, 180. I'm talking about as solid as it gets for a Sureño. And what they're doing is they're just staying out of trouble. These dudes are integrated with northerners now. They're sold up with northerners. They're not what they used to be. You know, our other cousins have drop points here in, in prison from from 100 drop points to 50, or they're going back to level three, level two yards, you know what I mean? Where you have people in the S and Y yard that are fighting every day, constantly fighting every day because there's no rules, there's no regulations, there's it's raw, real raw. Therefore, S and Y or GP, it's literally, it, it's, it's just a label. It's just a label, you know? So yeah, there's people that come to S and Y or they parole and they go right back to the hood because they feel like, man, if I, if I survive on the S and Y or how could they not survive in the streets, you know? 
What do you have to say to the youngsters, the youth out here that's involved in gang activity or thinking about joining gangs? Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, I think it should be known that we are living in a culture full of fakery and hype. You know, they got it's full of fakery and hype. This culture we live in, you know, we got these people like these rappers like Mozzie and then all these people that are just exposing murder for murder, body for body. All you hear is it's full of fakery and hype, man. I'm talking about these dudes are just you know, deceived, you know, they're being manipulated and tricked. So I think it's very important that we must understand that any group of any size, any gang, must have goals and long-term objective to function properly. You know, if your gang ain't, ain't, ain't got no goals and, and, and you ain't doing nothing productive, homie, you're, you're literally just wasting your time. You're wasting your time, you know, and uh, also, what I would like to say is that, uh, you know, for the youngster that's hearing me, you know, homie, you, you, were, you was born alone. You was born alone and you will die alone. You know, you have to do what's right for yourself and not live your life the way that anybody else wants it. You know, and uh, also that every negative situation contains a possibility for something positive. It's all the way you look at things, you feel me? So if you're looking for somebody to to, to game you up on, on anything, you know, feel free to just reach out to me, you know, through a JPEG, through a letter, or through anything, and I'm more than willing to correspond with you. Okay, I don't have no other questions for you, bro, but do you have anything else to add or address? Oh, uh, no, that, that, that's it right there, Big Drew. That's it right there. Okay, would you like to give a shout out to any um, family or friends out here? You have 60 seconds remaining. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'd like to give a shout out to the Notorious Enemy family. You know that Enemy Case Entertainment for the people that know about this music, Asesina, the homie Conejo from Arby's, you feel me? This, this, this music that, that I've always listened to is nothing but realism, you know, so for whoever's out there listening to the music, Asesina, to this Conejo, you know, hey, homie, just, just keep on doing what you're doing, dog. You know, we, we're riding till the wheels fall off.